G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Well, we're going to start a new series today. We've had a, um, uh, had a little TEA 20 that I did a deal on a little while ago and um, we know that the engine's crook in it and we're just going to run through doing the engine. The, um, the fellow I got it off, we just did a swap, I, I swapped him an old an old seized Farmall 100, old rusty old thing, and he wanted some parts off that. So we actually did a swap, and I ended up with this little, really original, straight little TEA 20. Now, the serial number's 384,486, which makes it a 1954 model. Now, uh, a little bit of info on the TEA 20s, or on the TE20s in general, um, uh, on the petrol, which is a TEA, or the petrol Kero with the two fuel caps, which is a TED20. Now, early, early in the piece, they come out with an 80 millimetre bore. Um, both the petrol and the petrol Kero, we call it in Australia, or the TVO, you call it in other areas. Um, they both have a 92 millimetre stroke, but um, the early tractors with the water pump bolted to the block were an 80 millimetre bore. Now that's the quickest way to tell. If you're not sure which tractor you have, you can um, have a look. If the water pump's on the block, well, it's a 80 millimetre bore. Um, the 80 millimetre bore with a 92 mil stroke, I've just got a few notes here, um, just so I get, a, get the facts right for you. Um, the 80 millimetre bore with a 92 mil stroke on a four cylinder gave the first engines an 1850cc displacement, which gave them 23.9 horsepower. So the compression ratio on that, on the early motors, was 5.77 to 1. And um, yeah, the, the 80 millimetre, you can still buy the new liners for the 80 millimetre, but um, it's sort of hard to... Uh, some companies have them, some don't, so you have to shop around a bit. Um, later on, and at serial number, the tractor serial number, now the tractor serial number's on the dash here near the steering wheel, um, a tractor serial number 172589, that's when they went from 80 millimetre to 85 millimetre. There's a few 80 millimetres out there, but the majority of tractors that you'll come across nowadays are 85 millimetres. And another interesting fact, when they got to serial number 200,000 on here, they went from 6 volt to 12 volt. So things changed a little bit there, but basically the engine remained the same. Um, the only difference there would be a six volt coil and, a, and the starter motor. The, the six volt starter motor holes, the mounting holes, I believe a two and seven eight, don't quote me on that, but two and seven eight where the 12 volt starter went out to three and a half inch. So there is, um, there is replacement starters out there where you can convert your six volt to a 12 and things like that. So, um, the TED20, which was a petrol Kero one, still, it, it went 85 millimetre bore, um, but once they went to 85 millimetre bore with a 92 millimetre stroke, they went up to 2,088 cc's, which is um, 127.4 cubic inch. Um, but they were still 93.9 horsepower, and the lower compression for the lower octane fuel was 4.8 to 1. Our little TEA 20 here, being a 1954 model, it's an 85 millimetre bore, um, but with the 85 millimetre bore with the petrol only, they they pop the compression ratio up to six to one, and they now produce 28.2 horsepower. So to pick the compression ratio up, they change the depth of the um, combustion chamber in the head. So um, it was just a, um, a, a natural progression to use, the, to use the different fuels. So what's our plan with this tractor? Well, Sparex have supported my channel for a while, Bundy Bear's Shed, and, and Sparex in Australia got behind me for a few of the early videos I did on a, a TEA that 
We still haven't finished that TEA. We bounce around a bit. It just depends what we need to do at the time. And, and um, this tractor here with Sparex getting on board, we had a chat and I don't have a video out there on doing an in-frame rebuild kit to, an e, to a TE20. So the in-frame means if you have a hole in your liner and your sump's filled up with water or something like that, you actually need to pull the liners out and replace the liners, you know, or the liner with a hole in it and things like that. But you don't have to strip the engine completely to do that. You can leave the timing all assembled at the front. Um, you can leave the engine on the tractor. Um, to get the sump off, you have to loosen the front axle bolster just to let the sump drop down. Um, but on this tractor here, you've, I, you can't quite see that. We will go for a walk around the tractor. But um, on this tractor here, I've taken the front wheels off just so we can get the cameras in around for the, the engine overhaul videos. Um, I've got the bonnet loosened off and we'll, we'll take a few bits and pieces like that off. Um, this tractor, it's just got a lovely straight old patina to it. It's, I'm never going to paint it. We're going to put a new engine in it. We're going to leave it all dirty outside and just try and keep that natural patina of a, what, 54? So it's, 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 what's that? Oh, that's not quite 70 years old. So, um, yeah, look, that, follow along with this. Um, we'll take you for a walk around the tractor and just show you a bit about it. And the series will probably start by doing a compression test. Now, I have had this tractor running. The, the fellow I bought it off said it was running, but it blew smoke, a lot of smoke, and had a lot of blow by, and the engine was crook. So I actually started it up. I, I had a battery in it and started the tractor up. And I got it running, and he was right, it blew smoke. Um, no mosquitoes around when you start this little fella. And um, so I lifted the hydraulics, all that worked. Um, look, a lot of things worked on it. The front tyres were toast and things like that. So, um, so we know it runs, and with all the blow by and that, the engine's just worn out. So we're going to do a series on the TEA20. I'm not sure what we'll call it yet, whether we just call it TEA and the serial number or something like that. And we'll probably start off by doing a compression test, even though you may not need to do that. I'll just go through doing that. I haven't run through that properly in a separate video for a TE20. Now, uh, another thing to keep in mind is with this job, um, most, of the, most of the process you see of me pulling the manifolds off, the cylinder head off, um, the sump off, pistons out, liners out, all that sort of thing. Most of that process will be exactly the same for the 80 millimetre bore tractors, the 85 millimetre bore tractors, the TEA20, the TED20, all the other petrol TVO tractors with the standard motor company engine. And that goes right up to the Fergie 35 petrol and TVO with the 87 millimetre bore, exact same job. And apart from the fuel tank and the bonnet and all that, even the same job on a Massey Ferguson 135 petrol. So the basic block stayed the same. They went from 80 millimetre bore to 85 millimetre bore and then up to 87 millimetre bore. There is kits available where you can take a a little TE20 out to 87 millimetre bore. There's, there's, um, there's sleeves you can do that with, but um, in this instance, um, Sparex have supplied me the full engine kit. Um, the, we've, we're going to do the valves. Um, we have the valve guides. They've given me new valve guides. They, they asked me what I would like to do this restoration, the Sparex TE20, and um, perhaps we call it the Sparex TEA20 series. And um, so they've given me inlet and exhaust valves so far, um, the valve guides which we can put into the head, and they've given me a full in-frame engine kit. So in-frame means it doesn't have the main bearings because we're not pulling the engine out of the frame, and it will have the big end bearings, you know, the, the big Conrod bearings, it will have them in it, um, 
It has pistons, rings, liners, gudgeon bushes, lock tabs, top gasket, bottom gasket, and all that sort of thing. So, um, with the in, in, down in the description on the videos, um, I will have a link to where you can buy the parts that you see me using in Australia, and that's at queenslandtractorspares.com.au, which, full disclosure, is a company I own. Um, that's what I do for my living. I, I sell tractor parts at Queensland Tractor Spares. I own the business, and um, I own Bundy Bear Shed. So I, I have a, I have a, uh, I never have a day's work in my life. I'm playing with tractors on weekends and evenings. I talk tractors all day at work, and and yeah, if your um, if your hobby is your job, you never have a hard day's work. So, um, so I, I will put the links down there. Um, in the description on where you can buy the parts, I'll put a link to queenslandtractorspares.com.au um, in the description, hopefully a clickable link. And another piece of information that you may not know is recently we did a new website for Queensland Tractor Spares and if you go to the technical tab, like where there's the store, you can drop into the store and you know, under the Ferguson tab for these little grey Fergies, there's TEA, TED and TEF, then FE35 petrol and FE35 diesel. So a lot of parts, you, you can scrummage through there and have a look at parts. If you're in New Zealand um, and you would like to do a parts list off our website, we can arrange the freight. You won't be able to go through the normal checkout, but we can arrange the freight. Um, on the technical tab on queenslandtractorspares.com.au website, the, um, I've put a, a few downloadable links there. So if you have a look on the technical tab as workshop manuals, I've, I've put a completely free downloadable TE20 workshop manual. I've put a parts book and an operator's manual. I've put a Fergie 35, Massey Ferguson 35, complete workshop manual down there for free download. So, and I've also put a 135148 down there. It's for free, we're not, we're not making any money out of it, we're just helping people out. And so the idea is you can download those manuals, put them onto your hard drive of your computer or your phone or your, your pad, your tablet, whatever you like to use, and you can take them to the shed. If you have them on your computer, you can print out two or three pages of workshop manual Take it to the shed, it doesn't matter if it gets all dirty, you've got another copy on the computer, you can print another one out tomorrow. Then there's a couple of little service bulletins I've built so far and on the left hand side that's how old is my tractor and I've done a little thing on a TE20 on the different models and um, how to date your tractor off there. Um, Sparex, I've sold Sparex parts for years, they are my preferred supplier for all my Fergie parts. Um, in Australia, we have a couple of companies, but um, Sparex are, are the best, easiest, and um, better quality. You know, the, the better quality. Um, I, I have great quality with them, but like all companies, I, I keep an eye on what I sell. Um, now, people often mention that they've tried to, the, there is a Sparex website worldwide, and you can hop onto that Sparex website and run through the, all the different spare parts, but people chew my ear and they go crook, and why would I look at Sparex? They won't sell direct to the public. Well, they're a wholesale company only, and as a wholesale company, they have a dealer network. So if they started, us dealers, we do all the work in advertising and all that and, and promoting the product. If they sold direct to the public all the time, all us dealers would dump them because they all of a sudden become opposition. So, um, so if you're in another part of the world, you will, you will not be able to deal directly with, with Sparex. Um, but on, your, on their website, you'll be able to find a Sparex dealer or an agent near you. And so they will love it. If you can ring them up, say, look, I've been looking at um, Queensland Tractor Spares website. Um, here's your part numbers and they would love it. Um, another thing on our website is there's a catalogue section. 
Now, if you hop into the catalogue section, there's full downloadable, all for free, full downloadable, the, the complete Sparex tractor spares, um, tractor parts catalogues. And you can either click on them there and open them up in your computer and read them there, or you can download them and once again, print out a page, take them to the shop. There's, there's Massey Ferguson, there's um, Massey Ferguson, we've had to break up into three books. Um, there's a special TE20 catalogue down the bottom. It's a little bit dated now, but you know, it'll give you the part numbers you want. And so in the catalogue section, the full range of Sparex parts are there. And all we've made them all, with Sparex's help, we've made them all downloadable to you, the end user, for free. So hop on and do that if you'd like. But, um, but with all that, um, Sparex hopping on board with us, um, I'll, I'll show you the part numbers I use as we go along. And, um, and also the deal with them is that I don't just give a blanket thumbs up to everything. If, if something's shit, you'll hear about it. <laughs> they will first. And I'll say, look, yeah, that part, I found something a little bit wrong or something not right. So um, we're going to be pretty fussy with it in here. And at the moment, we're not going to do anything else but do the engine. Um, later on with this tractor, we'll probably look at doing the timing chain and the governor and all that sort of thing just to, um, just to keep it bundled together as a, as a little TE20 unit. So, so stay with us. I'll go handheld. We'll just go for a quick little walk around the tractor. And by going for a walk around the tractor, you'll see what we're starting with. And that'll just be the introduction on the little tractor, what we're planning in the series. And the first part of the series will be a, a compression test. We'll put a battery in and we'll do a compression test. We'll show you how to do that. And then we'll start popping the head off and things like that. Okay, we've gone handheld here for the moment. And you'll see I'll have the front wheels off. And you, you don't need to do that. I've just done that so I can get the camera in and um, with the wheels sitting on the ground, they seem to get right in the way. So, so look, it's a nice tidy little tractor. The inlet and exhaust manifold is rubbish. It's been all welded up, but I do have a new one of them there. The vertical exhaust we're going to take off and put a downswept. You can see where the bracket is still underneath the tractor for the downswept exhaust. The, this tyre is a bit had it, but it's got a lovely patina to it, this tractor. Yeah, someone had a, a bar going across here, and I think it had a board going behind the seat here with an umbrella, possibly. We don't know that, we're just thinking that. You can see on the top of the frame where a board went across. It has a PDO seal leak, we'll probably fix that. It's not going to get painted. Someone's put another outer rim on here. The steering box is leaking and it looks to have the original, oh it's a Bosch coil, but that's a very old style ignition coil. But the bonnet just has a lovely patina on it. You can see where the paint's just worn from sitting and then you can still see a little bit of grey in through here. So like I say, we're not going to paint it. I'll try and stay out of the shadow for you. I'm not going to paint it. This is going to be just a nice little tractor to putt around on. They're only like this once, it doesn't take much to bugger that up. So we'll have a bit of a look. Um, oh, another thing is someone's put a car distributor on it with a, um, with a vacuum advance. So it must have had distributor problems sometimes in its life. And I'll try and, light's a bit of a problem at the moment. Um, at the back here, we can see where the starter comes in, we have a long housing here that's about oh, 170, 80 mil long. That's a 12 volt. The 6 volt tractors only have a little short bump. So there you go. That's a quick walk around the little TEA. Um, the 1954 TEA 20. So this is just an introduction of, of what's coming up in this little series. I don't know how many videos it's going to take. I'm going to try and keep it simple for those who want to follow along or 
those who haven't done a tractor before and, and they want a how-to, I'm going to try and make it a how-to that's easy to follow, um, clear and simple instructions, and we're going to try and back it up with the content on our website and um, where you can buy the parts if you need to. So that's it. That's it for the introduction. Um, follow along with us and enjoy the ride. Um, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. Um, with, the, with the content all the way through, um, YouTube likes all the likes and all that sort of thing. So if you like it, like it. Um, if you have the time, watch a couple of ads for us. That's what helps fund the, um, the channel, Bundy Bears Shed. Google the Google ads, if you watch 15 seconds of them, that gives us a bit of funding to keep going and buy tractor parts and keep the cameras and all that up to scratch. And look, try and comment. Um, the more interaction we have with the public on, the, on a video, the, the more it'll be promoted and, and you know, it'll be easier for others to find. So, so look, please like, subscribe. Next to the subscribe button, you'll see a little bell. Um, press that little bell and you'll see a couple of little, um, little brackets come in. And that lets you know when we've done another video on this tractor or when I put another video out full stop. And it lets you know that there's another video there and you'll be notified and you can follow along the series without having to look too hard. So, so that's it. Follow along and yeah, I hope to bring you along with the journey and I hope you all enjoy it.